Ja. If that favorite novel or whatever it might be that you would read um, would deal with acceptance, favoritism, ridicule, rejection, sudden changes, slavery, false accusation, abuse, and being forgotten. Would you call that a pretty good story? I would. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many? Let me think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things. Acceptance, favoritism, ridicule, rejection, sudden changes, slavery, false accusations, abuse, then being forgotten. That's the story of Joseph. Can you stop? I, uh, those of you that are following the open windows, read the Bible through the plan. You just come through, you're probably in Exodus now, but you just come through Genesis in the last uh, uh, 12 or so chapters in Genesis, deal with the story of Joseph. I always enjoy that. Uh, I always enjoy the story of Joseph. He, but in, in, in the story of Joseph, uh, these, these nine things are steps in his life. He's accepted. He's wearing a coat of many colors, supposedly. Favoritism. I mean, he was, he was Jacob's favorite, right? He was the son of Rachel, Jacob's favorite wife. He just had four. Uh, acceptance, favoritism, ridicule. Who ridiculed him? His brothers. Remember the dreams? What was that, Brother Donnie? I'm sorry. He had four wives. I bet he was broke. Oh. <laughs> I didn't say that, Brother Donnie. I didn't say that. Uh, he was accepted. He was a favorite. He experienced, he experienced ridicule from his brothers. <laughs> he was rejected by whom? His brothers. Sudden changes comes in his life. Anybody want to name what those were? Sold it. Okay, slavery is next. False accusations. Potiphar's wife. Abuse and being forgotten. I don't know if you've if you've not read this story of the account of Joseph. I challenge you, and uh, sometime if you can read it uh, with one setting, which would involve, like I said, twelve different chapters, uh, be a good read, but. Uh, the life and times of Joseph, I, I, I find them very, very interesting. Let me read you my notes. He is the firstborn son to Rachel, the wife of Jacob. The name Joseph means the Lord will add. His life and times make for some of the best reading in the Bible. His story among men is very complex. In it, he has to deal with in those nine things that we talked about. His story before God is one of dreams, purity, honesty, responsibility, and faithfulness. He is a man acquainted with sudden changes in life. In one day, he moves from being a favorite son to being a slave and therefore merely property. In a single day, he moves from being in charge of Potiphar's house to being falsely accused, condemned, and, of course, incarcerated. Then later in one day, he moves from being a prisoner to the head of Egypt's government, or we could say that he moves in one day, he moves from being a prisoner to being prime minister of Egypt in the sense that he's the prime minister person under Pharaoh. 
Surely pain and confusion were parts of his life. His joy didn't come or go because of the circumstances. How many of us, how many of us allow the circumstances in our life to govern or control or shape our day? Undoubtedly, his joy and peace came from another source outside himself. Things happened in his life. How many times did he rerun the memory scenes of his earlier life? How many times did he remember his family by name and face? How many times did he question his own decisions and choices? Life is made up of lots of turns, curves, hills, starts and stops. And so I asked the question, how could he just forget it? <laughs> what can we do with our past? We can't do anything with it, can we? Can't undo it, can you? It's gone, isn't it? Have you ever thought about the the finality of yesterday? It's gone. It's sealed. Never to return. Yesterday. And tomorrow? What about your tomorrow? What about my tomorrow? With a phone call this afternoon, I made some plans for tomorrow. I'm assuming a lot of things, aren't I? I called the rental center down there and I said, I want to rent that stump grinder you've got down there. I've got some stumps I want to grind out tomorrow. think that'll happen? What's in your tomorrow? Anybody want to share real fast? What's in your tomorrow? It's just what you think. I, I understand. Mary Jane, do you work tomorrow? I work at home tomorrow. Oh, I work well, down today. Well, when I said that, we're, yeah. We're I, I painting, said, so in the morning I've got to get up and move stuff out and put somewhere or whatever so we can get some work done. Okay. She's working <laughs> at home. That's what I'm playing right now. She's working at home. Uh, That's what we do with it, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you got any plans tomorrow? Must be nice. Or terrible or something. <laughs> but to... Yesterday is yesterday is 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 spent. It's gone. Mistakes, uh, successes, uh, questions. Um, something we said out of turn, or something we shouldn't have said at all, or something we wish we had said. Yesterday's gone, isn't it? And tomorrow? Mm -mm. What is tomorrow? Well, how about today? We're still living in the today, aren't we? You chose to be here tonight, and thank the Lord you did. But yesterday's gone. Tomorrow is a maybe, and today is all we have. And so um, we can't erase our past. Joseph couldn't do a thing about his past, and neither can we. Well, as we, as we think about Joseph's life and, and the ups and downs and the changes that were made in his life, uh, how, how can he, or how did he handle all of these things in his life? How do we handle all these things in our life? Real simple. Our faith and trust in God. You read my notes. 
believe in belief or believe God is still sovereign and in control. When is there ever a good time to throw a fit, make a golden calf and bow down to it and say, these are the gods that brought us up out of Egypt? <laughs> is there ever a time that we're allowed to let our hair down as Christians? Joseph believed that God was still sovereign and in control. And <laughs> over in the 40th chapter of Genesis, uh, that's where the, uh, Potiphar's wife has falsely accused him. Um, she was hanging on to his coat <laughs> and uh, she lied about the situation and when her husband got home she uh, shared with him and, and uh, so he had Joseph thrown in jail. In fact, about it, it seems to be that perhaps that uh, uh, Potiphar being a very high officer may have may have been in charge of, 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 of the prison and some of those things. And so he had him thrown in jail. Did Potiphar's husband know that Joseph was innocent? I believe he did. That's probably why he probably wasn't hung immediately or something. But there it's in it's in jail. Jo uh, Joseph winds up in prison and uh, the Lord blesses him and Joseph immediately moves to be the main man under the main man there with the dungeon. And so he gets acquainted with two officers that belong to Pharaoh, the butler and the baker. The guy who, who uh, gives Pharaoh his, his his wine, and and then the guy that uh, baked the stuff for the Pharaoh. They both have dreams. Joseph sees them early in the morning or in the morning, and he says, hey guys, what are you doing so cast down? Well, they have in prison. But for whatever reason, they were they had this cast down look about them, so he, he's a person, a personable person, and so he's interested. And one of and the, and the butler says, "Hey, I had this dream, and in three days uh, uh, I was out of here. In three days I was giving the king his wine again." And so Joseph interpreted the dream. He said, hey, in three days we'll reinstate you. And the butler or the baker thought, well, man, this is this is okay. He's given a good interpretation. And so he says to Joseph, well, 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 I had this dream, and I had these three baskets, and they were on my head, and the birds came by and ate down the top basket, and oh, and I, and I can't I can't uh, uh, redo it verbatim, but Joseph says, hey, in three days. King's going to lift up your head, lift off your head, and of course that, that happened. And so uh, Joseph simply says to the to the uh, butler, "Hey, when you when you get back with the king, uh, remind him." Over in chapter forty, verse fourteen, I want to I want to read this, Genesis forty fourteen. But remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. This is the only place and only time in the story that Joseph seems to um, defend himself. Talk about his own innocence. Well, over in chapter 41, Verse 1, then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. Anybody remember what that dream was? Anybody want to tell us what that dream was? It involved 
seven years of blessings and seven years of famine. And in verse 9, chapter 41, then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. Pharaoh had these dreams and nobody could interpret them properly, so the butler says, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, I remember a couple years ago you threw me in jail. And it goes on. So Pharaoh says, hey, hey call him. Call him. And so there's the, the Joseph believed that God was in control. No matter what Let's take away something here. No matter what our situation may be, or no matter what our situation may come to be, what should we know under that? Underneath all that, and in spite of all that, what should we know? God's in control. Is there ever a time, does he ever take a vacation? Brother Jason is, says that he sets aside times of the year to do stewardship. And you know, some folks seem to have the idea that because I'm not there, yeah, I'm a member there, but because I'm not there that Sunday, you know, I don't have to give. I don't get to give. And so they don't. Does God ever take a vacation like that? His grace is continually, <clears throat> continually given and granted to us. Well, you know, no matter what our situation we can count on God being in control. I don't know how Joseph knew this. I don't know what kind of teachings he had in his background. I don't know. Now, Jacob had been a scoundrel in times and ways. Uh, but evidently in later years he learned some things and Maybe taught Joseph some things. I don't know how Joseph knew some things that he did. But Joseph knew. Joseph believed that whatever his situation was. You see, we never, we never see Joseph getting mad and throwing a fit and as we say, having a spade. <laughs> is there ever, is there ever a time? when I can just absolutely throw a fit, <laughs> say things that I shouldn't say, you know, is there ever a time for that? No. No matter what my circumstances or situation may be, I'm to be a Joseph. Now, I want to be a Joseph. W-A-N-T, I want to be a Joseph. Another way that, Mo, uh, that Joseph dealt with the situation. Even though it doesn't say here, I believe we can safely say that it's just understood that he prayed. Is there anything we cannot pray about? Is there anything that God cannot handle? I'm talking about big things and small things as well. You see, evidently, evidently, we don't, once Joseph makes it to the big time, as we'll say, we don't know how. You know, how did he react toward Potiphar's wife? How did he react toward Potiphar? How did he, how did he react toward those that he encountered in prison who were mean and honoring and vicious? I don't know how he reacted, but it seems to be that he blessed those that were around him. Okay. 
You see, forgiveness is the only remedy Amen. Obey. Amen. Forgiveness is the remedy for those who trespass against us. Now that doesn't mean you like it. <laughs> doesn't mean that, that uh, uh, it just doesn't mean that you like it. But it means that we're like Christ. Forgiveness is the only way that we can deal with anger and those things that might come into our heart concerning others. In fact, about it, Jesus, over in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, he says that <laughs> anger is the seedbed for murder. And he takes it back to where it really begins in the heart. And so in this situation, uh, whatever the case may be, we can ask God to help us forget the problems or the hurt or the wrongs. The reason I'm assuming that Joseph has done this and is doing this is because we don't read where he held he held accounts uh, I, mean, you, I mean you gotta stop and think about this now here he is yeah he's a 17 year old kid say, saying things that he probably shouldn't have said I mean maybe even with an attitude that he shouldn't have been in this place and so his brother says, yeah, hey, look at that. I think that dreamer. And you can just feel and hear the contempt in their, in their voices. And, and they throw him in the pit. And they get rid of him. And then they sell him for the price of a slave to some Ishmaelites. <laughs> They're going down, to, going down to Egypt. And if you look at a, if you look at a map, uh, you just kind of eyeball it. From Dothan down into Egypt could be 200, 250 miles. I wonder how he went down through that. I wonder how he traveled that distance. Was he on the back of a good horse? Was he on the back of a camel? I wonder how he did that. By foot and barefooted more than likely. You see, the only, the only in this thing of having things to happen to us like that, someone has said that forgetting should be the problem, not the forgiving. Joseph never seemed to forget it, but he forgave. Remember, when you read the story, you'll find that his brothers come to him after their dad's death. In fact, about it, they don't even come to him. They send a they send someone to Joseph and says, you know, we're sorry we did these things. And Joseph said, hey, maybe you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To prepare a people, to prepare a place. Well, you see, with Joseph, there never seemed to be a time that he allowed himself the luxury of feeling ill or negative or mean towards someone else. He was aware that God was sovereign and God was in control. And then one of uh, another Joseph principle is to look outside yourself. Look outside yourself for joy and contentment and peace. I challenge you, as I've challenged folks down through the years, to read your Bible. You say, well, I don't understand. And I can't pronounce those words. and I don't know how and why this. Keep reading. 
and then reread it. And then read it again. It's amazing how that we find those biblical characters. See, see, Joseph, from the time he was 17 till he died, he never was his own man again. Never was his own man. He was a slave. He was property. Yes, he was high up. That's true. And he, he rode in a chariot. He, he was, and folks bowed the knee to him, and, and uh, he, had a, he had a ring that belonged to Pharaoh on his hand. But he was property all the time. He was property. Yeah, he was harking back to Daniel, and Daniel was the same thing. Evidently, he was a teenager. Gets carried off to Babylon. Never his own man again. Never, as far as we know, he never was free in the sense that you and I know freedom today. Well, <laughs> looking outside ourselves, and we must learn to look outside of ourselves for joy and contentment and peace. This world will sure not give it. In my lifetime, I don't remember when, when, from the time I began to see things and realize, I don't remember, I don't remember a time when there wasn't a war going on somewhere in this world. And I, when I say war, I'm talking about somebody shooting at somebody else and somebody else shooting back at somebody. <laughs> That's war. Now they can call it a skirmish, whatever they want to, but somebody shooting at me and I'm having to shoot back to defend myself. That's war. So, but we, you know, we that are Christians must look outside of ourselves. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7 says, If man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies to give peace with him. Okay? Seems like they're here. Isaiah 26, 3. He shall keep him in perfect peace, he whose mind is stayed or fixed on him, God. Now these are these are biblical promises. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. So the Joseph principles, forgetting, trusting God. I mean, look at all the ups and downs in Joseph's life. And yet he stayed true. Well, You ever hear any of you? Have you ever heard young folks ever say, I'm bored? Have you ever heard that? I'm bored. I learned that it was uh, just another way for them to say, I'm not being entertained. Well, Joseph, no doubt, no doubt, Joseph wondered why the butler. Didn't put any good word for him. But it seems that in spite of all this, in spite of all those things, Joseph trusted. It's a principle. I call it a Joseph principle. Uh, uh, another Joseph principle, and I'm going to quit with this, but commit yourself. Commit myself anew and afresh right here, right now. Not putting off till tomorrow to do this. You see, I've come to learn this in latter years. It's always, and maybe I've said it before, but I'm at time, I'm talking about Peter, right? But it's always the right time for me to do the right thing. Whether I'm here, or whether I'm downtown, or whether I'm somewhere else, or whether I'm out there in the middle of the field, grinding on a stone. <laughs> it's the right time. It's always the right time for me to do the right thing. Yes, Joseph had a lot of responsibility and perhaps the pain of his past. Past. P-A-S-S-E-D. To some degree. No doubt he still had the memory 
but he prospered in spite of it. Why? Remembering the Joseph principles. He did right, regardless of the situation. He did, he did right. And, and the thing of it is, when we stop and think about Joseph being a prisoner all that time and then getting thrown in jail for false accusation. I mean, it would have been a good time, would it not? To have forgotten some things, but evidently he kept them in store. When we walk with God, when we walk with God, now when do we walk with God? 7 24. When we walk with God, the promise before you is always greater than the pain behind you. I don't know where I got that at, but man, that's good stuff, isn't it? The pro when you walk with God, the promise before you is always greater than the pain behind you. Walk on, carry on, move ahead. Leaving your burdens at the foot of the cross and take up your cross and follow him. He left the cross in his past as well. Any comments? Any thoughts? I know I've triggered some. I know I've triggered some thoughts. Any thoughts? 